A Muslim Woman Oppressed Does Islam Oppress Women? Among the many topics of interest to non-Muslims, the status of Muslim women and the theme of their rights, or rather, the perceived lack of them, seems to be foremost. The media's portrayal of Muslim women, usually outlining their oppression and mystery, seems to contribute to this negative perception. The main reason for this is that people often fail to distinguish between culture and religion, two things that are completely different. In fact, Islam condemns oppression of any kind whether it is towards a woman or humankind in general. The Quran is the sacred book by which Muslims live. This book was revealed 1,400 years ago to a man named Muhammad, peace be upon him dash, who would later become the prophet, peace be upon him dash. Fourteen centuries have passed and this book has not been changed since, not one letter has been altered. In chapter 33, entitled Surah Al-Azab, the clans, verse 59. Allah the Exalted Almighty says, what means? O Prophet! Say to your wives and your daughters and the wives of the believers. Let your outer garments you wear hang loosely over you so that your bodies are not revealed to unrelated men. That is more likely to distinguish them as free women so that they are not subject to harassment like the servant girls are. And Allah forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents, and he is merciful to them. Quran 33 colon 59 this verse shows that Islam makes wearing a hijab necessary. Hijab is the word used for covering, not only the headscarves, as some people may think, but also wearing loose clothes that are not too bright. Sometimes, people see covered Muslim women and they think of this as oppression. This is wrong. A Muslim woman is not oppressed, in fact, she is liberated. This is because she is no longer valued for something material, such as her good looks or the shape of her body. She compels others to judge her for her intelligence, kindness, honesty and personality. Therefore, people judge her for who she actually is. When Muslim women cover their hair and wear loose clothes, they are obeying the orders of their Lord to be modest, not cultural or social mores. In fact, Christian nuns cover their hair out of modesty, yet no one considers them oppressed. By following the command of Allah, Muslim women are doing the exact same thing. The lives of the people who responded to the Quran have changed drastically. It had a tremendous impact on so many people, especially women. Since this was the first time that the souls of man and women were declared equal, with the same obligations as well as the same rewards. For the first time in history, women were granted economic independence in Islam. The money they bring into marriage is theirs as well as the money they earn. In Islam, women are allowed to choose their own husbands and in extreme cases, ask for divorce. A woman has the right to be educated, contrary to what the contemporary world might think. The responsibility is that of the person who is raising her. Islam is a religion that holds women in high regard. Long ago, when baby boys were born, they brought great joy to the family. The birth of a girl was greeted with considerably less joy and enthusiasm. Sometimes, girls were hated so much that they were buried alive. Islam has always been against this irrational discrimination against girls and female infanticide. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Seeking knowledge is mandatory for every Muslim, male and female. Men and women both have the capacity for learning and understanding. Since it is also their obligation to promote good behavior and condemn bad behavior in all spheres of life. Muslim women must acquire the appropriate education to perform this duty in accordance with their own natural talents and interests. While maintenance of their homes, providing support to the husband and bearing, raising and teaching children are among the first and very highly regarded roles for a woman. If she has the skills to work outside the home for the good of the community, she may do so. However, this is allowed only as long as her family obligations are met and as long as she complies with the Islamic code of dress and conduct, with no intermingling with men in the workplace. Islam recognizes and fosters the natural differences between men and women despite their equality. Some types of work are more suitable for men and other types for women. This differentiation in no way diminishes the effort or benefit of one gender over the other. God will reward both genders equally for the value of their work, though it may not necessarily be within the same sphere of activity. The two great roles a woman plays in life are that of a wife and a mother. The Prophet, peace be upon him dash, once said to a group of companions, Concerning motherhood, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Heaven lies under the feet of mothers. This implies that the success of a society can be traced to the mothers who raised it. The first and greatest influence on a person comes from the sense of security, affection, and training received from the mother. Therefore, a woman having children must be educated and conscientious in order to be a skillful parent.
A man came to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and asked, Who among my kinfolk is worthy of my good companionship? The Prophet, peace be upon him, dash, replied, Your mother three times before saying, Your father. This indicates the impact that a mother has in a person's life. So women are highly honored in this great religion. Islam is a religion that treats women fairly. The Muslim woman was given a role, duties and rights 1,400 years ago that most women do not enjoy even today in the West. These rights are from God and are designed to maintain a balance in society. What may seem unjust or missing in one place is compensated for or explained in another place. From Al Jumu'ah Volume 14 The best among you are those who are the best to their wives. This shows that Islam highly encourages treating the wives well. They should be shown love, respect and care. To foster the love and security that comes with marriage, Muslim wives have various rights. The first of the wife's rights is to receive dowry, a gift from the husband, which is part of the marriage contract and required for the legality of the marriage. The second right of a wife is maintenance. Despite any wealth she may have, her husband is obligated to provide her with food, shelter and clothing. He is not forced, however, to spend beyond his capability and his wife is not entitled to make unreasonable demands. Does Islam oppress women? 1400 years ago Islam gave women rights, rights that could not have been imagined by European counterparts. Bold words. Words that have been spoken repeatedly, especially in the last two or three decades by Muslim converts and Islamic writers, academics and educators across the globe. Women's rights, responsibilities and choices have been the subject of books, articles, essays and lectures. Sadly however, convincing the world that Muslim women are not oppressed by Islam is a message that is just not getting through. Media headlines scream oppression and the words Muslim, women and oppression seem to have become inextricably linked. No matter what Muslim women do or say to try to convince the world otherwise, words like hijab, burqa, polygamy and sharia seem to do little but convince people that Islam oppresses women. Even educated, articulate women fulfilling the modest conditions of hijab can do little to dispel the myths. Women who conduct themselves with decorum and grace and function effortlessly in the modern world have their achievements and successes celebrated. However, if a woman wears a scarf, covers her hair or puts her religion above worldly pursuits she is immediately labeled oppressed. One wonders if this is the case for women of other religious persuasions. Are modest religious women of all faiths labeled oppressed? Alternatively, is it just Islam? The most visible sign of a Muslim woman's faith is the headscarf or hijab, it is also the garment that leads people to believe that Islam oppresses women. Although Islamic scholars unanimously agree that modest dress and head coverings are obligatory in Islam for the majority of Muslim women around the world to cover or not to cover, is a freely made choice. The women who chose to wear hijab view it as a right, not a burden and many describe wearing hijab as liberation from the need to conform to unrealistic stereotypes and images dictated by the media. What exactly do Muslim women say about themselves in relation to the issue of oppression? In 2005, a World Gallup poll, the Gallup Organization, Princeton, USA. The Gallup World Poll is the largest available source of global public opinion data, providing access to the voices of citizens in more than 130 countries and areas. Entitled, What Women Want Listening to the voices of Muslim women revealed that the majority of women polled in predominantly Muslim countries resented lack of unity among Muslim nations, violent extremism, and political and economic corruption. The headscarf or hijab or any garment covering the face and body, often depicted as a tool of oppression, was not even mentioned. The report concluded that most women in the Muslim world are well aware that they have the same capabilities and deserve the same fundamental rights as men. Majorities of females in each of the eight countries surveyed said they believe women are able to make their own voting decisions to work at any job for which they are qualified, and even to serve in the highest levels of government. Islam raised the level of women, they were no longer chattels being passed from father to husband. They became equal to men, with rights and responsibilities that take into account the nature of humankind. Unfortunately across the globe, Muslim women are victims of cultural aberrations that have no place in Islam. Powerful individuals and groups claim to be Muslim yet fail to practice the true principles of Islam. Whenever the media reveals unconscionable stories about honor killings, genital mutilation, forced marriage, the punishment of rape victims, women being confined to their homes or women being denied education, they are revealing a tale of men and women who are ignorant about the status of women in Islam. 
O you who have faith in Allah and follow his messenger, you are not allowed to inherit the wives of your fathers in the way wealth is inherited or marry them, or give them in marriage. Or stop them from marrying. Also, it is forbidden for you to retain your wives who you do not like in order to get them to give back some of what you gave to them, unless they have had illegal sexual relations. In that case, you can get them to return what you gave them. Be good companions to your women, not hurting them, and be kind to them. If you do not like them for some worldly reason, then be patient with them. Allah may put much good in what you do not like, both in the life of this world and in the afterlife. Quran 419 The religion of Islam demands that women be treated with respect, honor, and justice. It condemns oppression of any kind. In Islam women, like men, are commanded to believe in God and to worship Him. Women are equal to men in terms of reward in the hereafter. Any person, whether male or female, who does good actions and has true faith in Allah will enter paradise, because they combined faith with practice. The reward of their actions will not be reduced in the least, not even to the extent of a speck on a date stone. Quran 4 colon 124 Women in Islam have the right to own property, to control their own money to buy and sell, and to give gifts and charity. It is not permissible for anyone to take a woman's wealth without her consent. Islam gave women formal rights of inheritance. Women in Islam have the right to an education, seeking and acquiring knowledge is an obligation on all Muslims, male or female. Muslim women have the right to accept or refuse marriage proposals as they see fit, and married women are completely free from the obligation of supporting and maintaining the family. Working married women are free to contribute to the household expenses or not, as they see fit. Women have the right to seek divorce if it becomes necessary. Prophet Muhammad, may God praise him, said, a matron should not be given in marriage except after consulting her. And a virgin should not be given in marriage except after her permission. The people asked, O God's messenger, how can we know her permission? He said, her silence indicates her permission. Sahih Bukhari. A woman was given by her father gave her in marriage when she was a matron and she disliked that marriage. So she went to God's messenger and he declared that marriage invalid. Sahih Bukhari The religion of Islam declares that women are worthy human beings deserving of respect and the right to be free from oppression. Women have the right to a decent life without facing aggression or abuse of any kind. They have the right to pursue a life that is pleasing to them within Islamic boundaries. Nobody has the right to force women to be less than they want to be. The true teachings of Islam declare that women should be held in a position of high regard. Sadly, it is true that some Muslim women are oppressed, but across the globe, some women are treated badly by some men, of all religious persuasions and ethnicities. It is possible to say that such and such a government oppresses women, or that Muslim men in such and such a country think it is acceptable to beat women, however. It is not correct to say that Islam oppresses women. If women were given their God-given rights, as set out in the religion of Islam, the global oppression of women could be trampled into oblivion. Prophet Muhammad, may God praise him, said, None but a noble man treats women in an honorable manner. And none but an ignoble treats women disgracefully. At Tirmidhi, 